welcome to the MSU Broad. I'm Georgia Erger, an assistant curator. And I'm Stephen Bridges, associate curator here at the museum. We're excited to have you joining us today for the opening of our newest exhibition, Interstates of Mind, Rewriting the Map of the United States in the Age of the Automobile. So the exhibition traces the development of the automobile in the interstate's highway system, examining its impact on the social and political landscape. The automobile, of course, brought about a new cultural paradigm for the 20th century, one that was intimately connected to the American dream. Um, it brought about new possibilities for social and physical mobility and also redefined the notion of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But of course, these benefits weren't ushered in democratically and corresponded to the racial, gender, and economic disparities of the time. Thus, the exhibition is at once a celebratory examination of the automobile, but also a critical examination of its impact. The exhibition itself derives primarily from the MSU Broad collection, with about 85% of the works coming from our collection here at the museum, as well as elsewhere at the university. We did also go out and seek additional loans from important local, regional, and national collections to augment and otherwise substantiate the display. Today, we're gonna to take you on a quick tour through the galleries to introduce you to the many themes and topics encased within the exhibition by way of an introduction in the hopes that you'll have something to bring with you when you come to visit us in person. And now, that starts here. In the landing for the exhibition, along with the intro panel, you have here an aerial view of a piece of Lansing's history. This is the corridor of I-496 Expressway that runs through Lansing prior to its building. Here, the photo mural shows the opening of that expressway, highlighting the name Oldsmobile, which is an important part of Lansing's history, with the car rushing through the paper mask, crashing through the window of the museum. These are themes that we'll return to in a moment but set the stage for the experience of the exhibition. This first gallery really looks at the early history of the automobile, and in particular, the utopic vision that early manufacturers and designers had, thinking about the way in which the automobile was gonna transform life and the physical landscape of the United States. Early videos from top automobile manufacturers feature people at work within the factories, glorifying the labor of the hands, visions of the utopic society that would come through the redesign of our transportation entirely built around the automobile, as well as other works connecting the work of factories and labor in Michigan to elsewhere in the world. While these utopic visions reigned at the time, we know today that that utopic Idealism remains, to this day, unrealized. This next gallery features primarily artists who are working in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and exploring the expanded visual culture that came about with the automobile. Thinking about things like graphic design, road signs, the sleek commercial excitement of the automobile. We've got works by pop artists who feature prominently in this narrative. We've got works on loans from our neighbors in Flint, this work here by Klaus Oldenburg, a work here by John Chamberlain, these two artists working with the materiality of the car itself. Over here, for example, we've got works that celebrate the excitement of the open road, the possibilities of the road trip as documented in these photographs over here, the mundanity of things like gas stations, long expanses of highways, but then also the eccentricities that you come about on these um, exciting road trips. And of course, these artists were very much working in the tradition of social realism. Photographers in the 30s and 40s were taking advantage of the automobile to travel to areas that weren't largely traversed by Americans. We see here um, photographs by FSA photographers on assignment from the federal government um, documenting the living conditions of Americans, primarily in the South. But again, thinking about the American dreams and the ideals of the American dream, how they often didn't line up with the realities of folks at the time. I also want to take a moment to pause and point out here some of the work that we have featured here in the cases. 
You'll notice that in most of the galleries in the exhibition, we have materials and cases that are archival and of a documentary nature, connecting the different themes and topics in each of the galleries, specifically to Michigan in this case. So here we feature WPA and FSA photographers working in Michigan, designing posters and other news items to be spread throughout the Michigan context. And here, early map of the national system of interstate and defense highways and an automobile blue book. So in the same way that artists were expanding the content of their works, artists were also coming from different backgrounds. A lot of artists had worked in advertising, for example, as we see in these works here by John Bader, who's documenting roadside attractions. Over here, we have really incredible works by pop artists, US and British pop artists. Again, the imagery of sort of the everyday coupled with the industrialization, the mechanization, the technology of the time, juxtaposing that with everyday imagery. Another key component of the exhibition here is the information that we've gathered and significantly benefited and learned from, from the MSU community. Here we feature a long timeline detailing the history of the automobile industry and the very key moments within that, with a special emphasis placed on the Lansing region and the state of Michigan in particular. We also feature materials related to labor and gender. Here the United Auto Workers Again, we return to conversation around the building of the I-496 Expressway in Lansing and the issues involved in that process. Again, here, highlighting the work of MSU researchers and faculty, as well as their students, in digging through real estate records, highlighting instances of redlining and segregationist polonies within the local region. On the wall here, we feature banners that specifically point to the role of Latino, Latina, and Latinx auto workers in the building of the automobile industry here in Michigan. Postcards and other ephemera related to the black resorts that are so important to the history of Michigan are featured. In this case, postcards related to Idlewild and Idlewilder magazine and images, photographs documenting life at these resorts that were very important to black life and culture here in the state. Returning to the mention of the blue book in the other gallery, here we have the green book, which was an important resource for people of color who were not able to travel as freely as others. This resource identified locations that were safe to travel to, welcoming locations for people of color traveling throughout the United States. So this gallery here um, features artists who are paying particular attention to the formal and aesthetic qualities of the automobile. And as you can see, many of these artists are using the actual materials of the automobile, found automobile parts. Nancy Grossman here, you can see bent steel, wheels, horns. She was a prominent abstract expressionist, but as we can see, in lieu of paint, she's using the actual um, material of the car to create these very evocative gestural um, movements. Here too, Richard Hunt uses steel and works very much in the model of a automobile production line, welding, sculpting his works. Thinking about um, Shakaya Booker's work here, using rubber tires, found automobile parts, and thinking about what these materials mean of markers of our industrial history. The tire as a symbol of both the rise and fall of industries, and particularly Midwest Western cities. In the final gallery here of the exhibition, we really focus deeply on the state of Michigan and the history here of Greater Lansing. And to do that, we bring in artists that live and work here or who have made work here. In the case of Stan Douglas, this photograph of the Michigan Theater in Detroit, which has now become, of course, a parking garage. Margot Volovich, Matthew Angelo Harrison, Bruce Thayer. These are all artists that live and work here in the state of Michigan and that make work about the experience of what it means to be here, all who also have ties to the automotive industry, whether personally or within their own family history. And again, to further unpack that story, here we have archival and documentary materials related to Ransom Eli Olds and the foundation of the Oldsmobile 
car company, car line. Materials related to life in Lansing in the mid 1900s, what it meant to own your own car, the feeling, the sense of pride to have access to the automobile and access to the open road, and the ways that the automobile really transformed the cities in this state. We would like to thank you for joining us for this tour of the exhibition, and we hope to see you very soon in person here at the museum. Please visit our website at broadmuseum.msu.edu to book your free ticket. We're open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 12 to 5, and very much look forward to you enjoying this exhibition with us.